Welcome back to the channel, you curd nerds. Today, we aren't going to be doing a mock check ride. We're not going to be uh, doing a lesson. We're actually going to be talking about avionics. Now, if you go and watch a video that I'm going to put a little doobly doo up here for, um, that is an interview from Oshkosh of 2024, where I talked to Micro Air Avionics about their T3000 system. Now, go and click on that video if you want to learn all about that system. But what we're going to be talking about today is a little bit of an update that they have. I recently did another interview with them over Microsoft Teams to talk about how they're actually going to try and get their T3000 system in your airplane, your certified airplane, sooner under Norsey or non-required safety enhancing equipment. Now, really what Norsi is, is it's really just saying like, hey, if we could install this item into your airplane and it's going to enhance safety, yet not interfere with the original operation of the aircraft, why not get it approved? Why not let you install it? Why not make it less complicated? A lot of the stuff that's under these things is things like angle of attack sensors and built-in iPad mounts. So hopefully we can get this T3000 system included under Norsi so that it can get installed in certified airplanes before 2026, because that's about the timeline that they're at right now. But enough of me rambling. Let's get into the interview. Just to kind of recap, uh, we had a meeting at Oshkosh where we were talking about the micro air avionics there, the T 3000 package that yep. uh, you guys are putting out and that you were actually getting pre-orders for uh, at Oshkosh. But the, the end goal was, was certification uh, in the FAA because apparently Australian certification is even longer than a FAA certification. So <laughs> for us in the States that, that don't really like the uh, FAA, just remember it yeah. could be worse. <laughs> Indeed. So, uh, why don't you tell us about the, the certification process? How's the, how's the pre-orders going? Yep, certainly. So, yeah, no, look, we walked away from Oshkosh having had a great show. Um, and, uh, no, up front, thank you for your, uh, for your, you know, your contribution. Certainly the, uh, we had a lot of fun chatting with some of your uh, followers. Um, I put the, lots of posts on the YouTube video and we engaged with lots of those. I think got a couple of orders out of that too, which was, which was fantastic. So, um, no, thank you very much. Um, yeah, look, no, we came away from the show with a good bunch of orders. Interestingly, you know, at the time we'd scheduled part of the product to be available uh, no earlier and then, then the transponder to follow on, but everybody that we sold a system to wanted the transponder. So we came back and uh, restructured what we were doing to make sure that we got it all ready um, to go together. Um, and that's going really, really well. So we start shipping in November bits of the system, so harnesses and mounts and uh, mechanical parts for people that are building airplanes so that they can they can uh, you know, be getting on with their builds. Um, and then the hardware you know, is still scheduled to follow on in, in Q1. Um, we'll start shipping you know, again you know, the instrument systems and some of that some of that stuff uh, a little bit earlier um, just to help people with their builds. Um, so that's all going that's all going you know, fantastically. Um, we got a couple of bits of feedback from the show that we've acted upon. So uh, the first of those was that um, no, most of the customers didn't really see the need of a you know, a nav com, and they would have referred to save a little bit of money and just take a com. And for those that you know wanted the nav, happy to have it sort of separate. So we've actually split that box. Um, in, into two modules, um, excuse me, and uh, that's no, that's that, that project's coming along really nicely. Um, I think I touched on it in our last one that uh, no prior show feedback had been that the desire for an engine monitoring system uh, that's progressing really well. We've got a really neat box for that, and we're really excited about that. Um, no, really good hot side functionality on the on that side of the firewall, um, ability to collect pretty much everything else around the aeroplane on the cold side that you need so you can display you know, pretty much everything. Um, another interesting bit of feedback from the show was um, no, the desire for certainly a, a, a percentage of the, the flying population to have an angle of attack probe. Um, and so the team's been working really, really hard at that. And that's a really cool product. Look, looking forward to talking to you a bit more about that when we have, you no, know, at the moment we've gone through our, all our proof of concept work. Um, we know we're into the design, the proof of design um, status. We'll be t starting testing in a couple of weeks. I uh, look forward to talking to you about that. But that's a really cool product because it actually brings all of their data computer functionality in, it physically into the probe. Um, so instead of having to run you know, lots of plumbing around your airplane, you can run a, a simple cable, um, plug it directly in, and you get all that get all that air data information straight out. So so we've been really busy post Oshkosh um, and very excited. Um, um, about what we're bringing. Um, in addition to that, obviously, we've been ramping up production to get ready. Um, so no, exciting times here at Microwave. 
but none of that addressed your question, which of course was certification, uh, and we've been we've been getting into that as well. So as we as we said um, last time, uh, the target is to certify by around the middle of 26. So ready, you know, ideally ready for Oshkosh 26 um, with the commitment that we start that process at the beginning of 25. Uh, we kicked it off a little earlier. Uh, we got, you know, as you know, we've got a lot of customers at the show that uh, that were interested. So we've you know, we've got some, you know, the early engagement with the FAA is is on its way. Um, you know, some of the software stuff, we know we engaged around that and we're working through you know, getting that cert plan together. I think I said last time, you now the complexity is the, the, the sheer number of TSOs that are, that are on that box um, and getting getting agreement as to how we test all of that together. Um, now the testing itself, obviously everything we do, we test to the same standards. Um, no, it's really now about pulling all that together um, and getting all the relevant parts of the FAA to sign off it and then getting on with it. So, uh, so still on schedule. I, I, maybe we'll get bits of it ahead of schedule. Okay. Always okay. optimistic. And the, just ballpark, if you were to ballpark like, a, hey, we've got a product that you could order that you could put in a certified airplane. Like what, if you were to put, you know, like a, a Q1 of 2026, not till 2027. Yeah, mid, look, look, we're still targeting mid-26, so we're ready for Oshkosh that year. Um, but I think that maybe the other thing that's worth touching on is that because we've gone and done all this work on the angle of attack pro, it's made us go back and think about Norsi a bit more. So, you know, you've got – we don't have the same thing in lots of other parts of the world, but in America you've got a great set of regulations around adding functionality to your aeroplane, which doesn't necessarily help you replace your six-pack because that's part of the certified aeroplane. But in terms of bringing extra information in – um, and when I take you through the angle of attack probe, maybe we can have another chat in a couple of weeks' time. Then that'll be a really good opportunity because that gives you an opportunity to actually start to put the through the, put the hardware on. You now get you know, essentially all the same functionality except for the radio and the transponder, um, but it gets all the same instrument um, functionality positioned around your six pack. But at least it starts to get you some of that that capability and some really neat stuff there. So so I think so in terms of someone wanting some of our capability, we're going to be able to do some things under Norsi, um, and we should be able to do that, you know, Q1, Q2 of uh, 25, just just depending on how long it takes to go through, walk through that process. Um, but then the full certified product, no, it's still very much, no, mid-26. Okay. And I, and, um, I, and I think that's on track. Now, I know some people might not necessarily be familiar with Norsi. I know, you know, it took me getting into general aviation and actually working on my own airplane before I, sure. I even knew what Norsi was. So you want to give yes. us a little bit of breakdown about what Norsi is, just for those that might be a little confused about what you're talking about. Yeah, sure. So I should have the acronym in front of me. But I can't actually remember it, but it's, no, it's, 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 it's essentially non-required safety enhancing systems. That doesn't spell Norsi, does it? I've missed a letter, but 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 that's what it is. It's so the, so the I think Congress um, you know, asked the FAA a few years ago to go and have a think about um, what things they could let get onto certified aeroplanes quicker and more so more easily um, that wouldn't necessarily replace what was the certification baseline requirement, um, but would enhance safety. Um, okay, so there's like. There's some iPad mounts out there that technically have yeah. more C qualifications. Yeah. Okay, and there's and there's quite a few um, angle of attack systems, and there's quite a few you know backup instrument systems and that kind of thing. So it's really about how do you now you take a you take a 1970 design. Let's face it, most of them are 1950s <laughs> designed airplanes, aren't they? I mean, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of old design airplane. The certification baseline, you know, is 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 no certainly not modern um, with a basic set of requirements. Doesn't touch that. Says that that all exists exists as it is, um, but there's things that you could put around it that actually would make that that pilot's life safe, that, 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 that operation safer. Um, no, Anglo attacks, obviously, one of them. Um, mm -hmm. no, backup instruments generally are another. So in, no, in any of those things. Um, so, yes, the, the – I've got someone's holding it for me. Isn't that nice? Non-required safety-enhancing equipment. So N-O-R-S-E-E. -E. So there you go. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, that no, there's a there's a great opportunity for I think for people to add you know, really modern capabilities um, like some of the products that we're offering uh, under under that into their certified aeroplane as a step. Now there's still a process, right? No, this, it's not like you can just walk out and get anything and put it in the aeroplane, um, but it's uh, obviously a, no, an easier um, process um, for getting that equipment on board. So it's, it's exciting. That, that that is that is definitely exciting. Now when you're 
saying um, you're going to try and get this under uh, Norsi or non-required uh, safety enhancing equipment, are, are, are you going the route of like, I'm not going to replace the required instruments of 91205, but I could grab like your main box that you were selling at Oshkosh. And I, I don't remember the exact price point, but either way, it was affordable. Yeah. Um, yes. And I could replace, let's say, uh, or not even necessarily replace, but move my attitude indicator over outside of my like primary view and replace uh, it with a, you know, the T3000 package so that I could have a, a nav slash com transponder, um, you know, the airspeed indicator all on that, all on that main display uh, without violating like 91205 or without violating my original type certificate. Yeah. I, look, I, I, I think there's probably a little bit of work to be thought about as to whether you'd move your primary attitude indicator. So I think you, I think you've probably got to maintain the certification baseline of the aeroplane, and that's the standard six pack. Um, but I think uh, quite comfortably you could take that sort of first CDI position two to the two to the two to the right and put a, a system in there um, that you could certify under Norsi. It's no, it's and and it's still within your field of vision. Um, it enhances safety. So if anything in your six pack fails, it's there. I think the other good location is the clock, which is obviously one. Nor most airplanes is one to the left. Um, no, so there's probably two locations quite easily, and obviously the slots below them, um, which are still largely in the field of vision. We've got a really clear display. No, so you could put those there, and you can configure them to do to do anything anything you like. Um, the I think the jury's out a little bit at the moment as to whether a secondary radio is Norsi um, or a secondary transponder is 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 Norsi. Um, I'm not not quite sure where they'll land on that, but certainly our focus very much is on the instruments, which clearly are Norsi, um, and with our PDO tube replacement angle of attack sense, uh, uh, um, everything that comes with that, um, then that gives you, you know, pretty much all of those instrumentations. Gives you all your air data instruments, obviously. So you know, it gives you indicated airspeed, true airspeed, ang outside air temperature, you know, angle of attack, obviously. Um, it's got a magnetic heading um, built in the back of it too, so you get a, a heading display. So you get that, that, that's, that, that's just replace the probe, put in a single instrument, um, and not even the full core. That's just put a single, you might remember, we had the, the little small instrument, the remote. Um, if you want attitude information, then no, that would be the nav and the bigger, the, bit, the one module of the bigger instrument. Um, so really, really cool stuff there, I think, in that Norsi space. Okay. And I just want to, I just want to clarify when you're saying replacing the pitot tube and, you know, removing plumbing, you're saying that I could pull my pitot mast off of my aircraft again, you know, given the regulations, given the approval and whatnot. And if I was, I could replace that pitot tube with something that I could just plug a serial cable into the back of or whatever the cable happens to be without sure. having to run like soft plastic tubing or metal tubing or what have you uh, for my pedostatic instruments. Yeah. So, so I'll just, I'll just for the moment, I'll split experimental and certified here because experimental, what you just described is exactly what you can do. Um, no, the, the entire air data computer is built into the probe. Um, it's, no, it's fantastic. And it's just a, no, it's a it's a cable. We supply the cable as a harness. You plug it in, plug it in the instrument into our instrument bus. Away it goes. Um, for certified aeroplanes that have already got a pitostatic, and particularly if you've got to maintain the six pack, which is you know, in that Norsi environment, then it also has a pneumatic connection. So you connect it to the existing pitot um, plumbing. Um, it goes to the back of the existing instrument, so all they all continue to function normally. But you then have all the digital information coming out as well. Okay. Now. Um that, that seems, you know, you could read some of the comments on the previous video. Um, to me, that even se that seems somewhat like a single point of failure. Is there, um, like, what kind of protection are we getting? And I, I know when you look at, like, a pedostatic system, like a traditional one, it's like, well, that, that, that plastic line is a single point of failure, too. So, um, but just to, just to placate the comments. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. Is there, like, a backup? No, no. It's, I mean, I think that's a, that's, a, that's a really good question. So I'll tackle it in a couple of different ways. One is, as I just said, there's a pneumatic connection. So you can you can have it, it sits parallel to everything you've already got on the aeroplane. So you can have it, you know, all of the existing, and even if you're using T3000, you can still run you know, a tube all the way you know, down and put it into the back of our unit. Um, and you can have your balanced you know, static ports on the back of the back of the fuselage, feeding your static. You can have an alternate static port. You can do all the things that you normally would that gets you to the, exactly the same level of reliability as as no, a GA aeroplane today. 
Um, with the exception that you've then got this extra source of all this data. So if that, you know, if you get the blockage in your, in your, you know, you get water in the bottom of your static line, all the things that we know go wrong, um, then you've actually got a second source. So you're one step ahead there. Um, the, um, the within the probe itself, as we have with everything we do, we've used redundant sensors. So you no, know, in all of our, or anything that's primary. So you no, know, obviously, pit, you know, total pressure and static pressure, which obviously gives you airspeed. Um, we use triple sensors so that we can detect a failure in a sensor and we can exclude it. Um, in the angle attack sensor, we use two so that we can detect a failure but not exclude it because it's not a primary, not a primary indication. Um, and that's and that's the same in our attitude in our no, our AHAS is all triple redundant sensors so we can still detect and exclude. Um, so I mean that that's just the that's just the framework of how we operate. Um, the if you, if you really want to go you no know, one step further. Then, um, no, like it, again, like everything we've, we've built, we've always designed it for, for a split cockpit. So if you really wanted to, you can put two on, you set one as primary, one as secondary, you feed you know, different instruments and they have fail back, fail over too. So you know, the instruments will detect that they're no longer getting data from a primary source um, and they'll immediately look for data on the secondary source. If it's there, they'll display it and, pr and put, a, put up a warning on the screen to say that you're on, that you're on alternate source. So there's lots of combinations um, to deal with the, the, no, the ultimately the reliability um, question of you know, ensuring that you've still got it. And I mean, that's that's stuff that you you see in like an airliner, because like, you know, you look at A320, it has three different pedostatic systems. They're all independent sure. of each other. And every single display in that aircraft can access every single one. Sure. It doesn't warn you and it doesn't auto switch over in the 320. But what you're seeing is, you know, yours is going to do better than what the 320 is capable of. Um, <laughs> well, now, I, it, it, it may not quite get there, but I but I do come from a part 25 background. Okay. So that's that, that that's that's where I grew up. So now I do tend to think probably more 737 than 320 um, in my thinking. But that's just where I've been. Um, but, yeah, I mean, sure. I mean, that's 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 the way we think. You know, it's very much you know, how do you take a product that's. No, no, this product is designed to go on everything from twin engine, 12 seat airplanes to you know, the audio system designed that way as well, down to you know, a single seat and be affordable at a single seat and be capable at, you know, at a big engine level. So like that, that's been the core philosophy of, of everything we've done. Okay. Now, my only, you said there would be like a magnetometer in that pitot tube as well, which sounds great because we're putting it way outside of the flight deck. We're putting it away from all the magnetic interference of our radios. Yep. How are you tackling a, a heated pitot tube like that? Because, I mean, my understanding, a, a heating element that generates pretty big magnetic interference. Um, yes, yeah, absolutely it does. So um, quite so heating is an interesting question because obviously you know, we've got a bunch of customers that don't want heaters. We want a bunch of customers at 12 and 24 volts. So we've accommodated you know, three different models for, you know, for those combinations. Um, but the other thing is that no, there's no need to throw, when you turn the pitot tube on, it doesn't need to get to 80 degrees on the ground if it's 20 degrees. Sorry, I'm talking Celsius. It doesn't need to get to 100 and whatever <laughs> that works out to be. Yeah, we're right. over here at Freedom uh, Units. Come on. No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, no, it doesn't need to get to 200 degrees Fahrenheit um, just because it's no, already 60 degrees outside. Um, no, so we, we have a digital sensor that senses the temperature of the, of the probe. It maintains the, the um, pitot tube um, temperature at all times. So, you know, you don't even need to worry about turning it on and off. I would just leave it, just, you just leave it on. If the, if the probe starts to go below about, I'm trying to quick, quickly do the maths in my head, um, about 20 degrees Celsius, what's that, about 50 something degrees, 60 something yeah. degrees uh, Fahrenheit, whatever it is, um, then it'll start to you know, put some heat in. But then needs to put a little bit of heat in at that. There's 120 watts of heater in there, or I think 130 watts of heater in there. Uh, then they, it only needs to add a little bit of heat until it gets really cold and then it needs to add all of it. But of course, we can turn it off. Um, so we can know we know when it's off because it's all part of the electronics in the probe. When it's off, we we measure the we measure the um, magnetic heading, and when it's on, we don't. And we can do that you know, hundreds of times a second. Oh, um, okay. So it's pretty much since it's a, it's a pulse width modulation heater. Yeah. To to adjust, it's saying like, hey, I'm going to heat for you know a couple microseconds, then I'm going to turn off. I'm going to measure my headache. Okay. So yeah. that's, uh, that's yeah. actually a really, really snazzy way of handling that problem. Um, Cause you know, in my airplane, my heater, it's it, effectively, it's a switch that handles a relay that sends 12 volts yeah. to and, 120 and, and watts. And about 10 amps. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot of current. Exactly. Okay. So since yeah. we're pulse width modulation, it's, and yeah. you know, it's not a high amperage load. That's all right. And, all right. 
Yeah, and, and I think the other thing to add to that is that it's in most T3000 systems, it's there to add an additional heading sensor to the three heading sensors that are already in the core. So there's already a triple redundant set of heading sensors in there, um, which will do most of what needs to happen. But if you get some hard or soft iron effects on that that you can't, now we've got a calibration function, obviously, to, to remove as much hard and soft iron um, errors out of that being built. But, you know, if, you, if, you, if it just happens to be behind a great big great big engine and all the other metal that's in the, in that far field, now you may not be able to eliminate all that. So the reason there's one in, in the angle attack probe that's out on the wing is it helps then calibrate those ones. So all of your, all of your short-term adjustments are happening within that core and it's getting a longer-term reference coming from the wing um, where it you know, can be easily measured without any distortion and magnetic distortion um, and therefore calibrated out. So Okay. Um, that is... Can't wait for it to be certified so I can put it in my airplane. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to it too. Yeah. Um, now, uh, now you brought up that engine monitor. Um, how is that coming along? And, you know, uh, at least from my point of view, a, a lot of the incentive is that you are making a really great product at a good price, at a, at a really nice price point. And again, when we compare it to what else is out on the market, if I wanted a you know, I'm looking at an engine monitor for my aircraft. I mean, I'm, I'm spending $4,600 and that's not even counting labor to install it. Um, yeah. Are we trying to stay around just like what's available on the market or is it same as where you're going with the rest of this? Pretty dang yeah, affordable. Look, it, it, yeah, it, it'll certainly be affordable. Now, to some extent, you know, an engine system is is down to the sensors. Like there's an engine monitor and then there's the, you know, how many probes do you want to put on it? Now, six cylinders obviously going to be more expensive than four because you've got you know, 50% more, more probes. Um, you know, if you've got a turbo, do you want uh, inlet and outlet temperatures? There's, so there's a whole range of different things that can drive the cost. Um, that's you know, very flexible. But certainly, you know, it, it will be a much lower price point, um, entry price point than, than that. Um, no, it's it's yeah, like I said, it's real cool. It's, it's no, it's clearly aimed at um no, it'll, it'll handle six six probes. So sorry, it'll handle six ESC, six EGTs. It's got say fuel pressure, fuel ten, uh, fuel fuel pressure, fuel um flow, oil temperatures, oil temp, uh, oil flows. It's got um a whole bunch of other sensors for whatever inlet temperatures, and turbo temp, turbine temperatures, and stuff that you might different people might want. Um, and that's you no know, all. This, and then I'm oh, sorry. And then alternator voltage and current. On the, that, that, I think that's what's on the hot side. On the cold side, then you no know, fuel levels. Um, you know, sometimes the sometimes some of those some of the fuel sensors are on the cold side. The um, fuel flow can be on the cold side, so that's replicated on the cold side. Um, no, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So yeah, great range of great range of you no know, sensors. Um, no designed to mount straight onto the bulkhead and the firewall and through the firewall, so it's really, really, you know, really convenient to mount. And then it just connects into the same instrument bus that everything else does and displays the data. No, and like everything else, no primary, secondary, no multi, multi engine, etc. Okay, all, all capable for that, ready to now, go. Now, some of the other engine monitors on the market, you kind of have to fill out a, a sheet, and then you're waiting three, four months for them to you know, custom make your device. They even want a copy of like the limitation section of your POH. Um, is it going to be that same kind of, you know, long three to four month wait, or is this going to be like, you know, AMP adjustable or even end user uh, adjustable? Yeah. So there's, again, I'll talk experimental versus certified because we've got you no know, different scope of what we can provide. Um, but no, I mean, the aim is very much to hand, hand all of that um, to the installer at least. Um, whether the stall is an AMP or the, or the user, again, certified versus experimental. Um, but no, the aim is to very much hand, hand all that over. Um, now, we will obviously have standard models for sample mappings, for standard engines, um, no, to try and help that process and, and no, eliminate any possibility of no, make people making a mistake. Um, but no, very much um, the idea is that that's you know, as configurable as, as, as possible. Um, I mean, one of the really interesting things that comes out of having the whole of the aeroplane's data on a single data bus. And it's, and no, and go back to, that's just to deal with the redundancy question. Yeah, the bus can be split into two so that, you know, if you if, if get a failure in the bus, you can split it. And it's obviously a very resilient, resilient um, type of hardware designed bus. But um, one of the great things of having all that data is you can then do a lot of stuff with it. Um, no, so no, we're, we're working on a master caution system at the moment. 
um, you know, that you can basically, you know, a user, again, you no know, user can come in and program it and say, well, when this parameter goes above or below this level and these other things happen, well, then I want a, you know, a caution and I'll, you know, it's going to present up an amber. But if you know, these other set of combination things happen, well, that's going to be a warning. It's going to come up red and it's going to trigger a master caution. Um, so, so you know, there's a huge amount of flexibility that you get. Um, and again, certified aeroplane you know, with an OEM delivery, no, the OEM will control all of that. Um, certified aeroplane, um, no, in a non-OEM environment, so in a retrofit, no up upgrade environment, then no, the installer is going to need to help manage that and will support them. And then experimental, no, will be handing all of that flexibility to to the to the builder. Okay. And when you say, you know, you've got all these options, am I going to learn, have to learn like some kind of programming language to adjust this? Or is there going to be a, a like a graphical user interface? No, nah, it'll be, it'll be jump on, it'll be, no, nah, it'll be through a web portal. Okay. That's things. even better. Yeah. Look, so, so it, it, it'll depend on complexity. So most things right now we have, we have obviously everything, everything's adjustable in the system has to be adjustable through the user interface. So it is, but it's a, it's a, it's a three inch dial, right? It's, a, it's, mm -hmm. I can go in there and do it. Um, it's a bit fiddly. Um, it's all doable, just a bit fiddly. So we have an app. Everyone okay. has an app, right? <laughs> yeah. So right now we have an app, and you can go into the app and you can adjust every setting really easily on the app. Um, no, but you need, but you need to be connected to the airplane to do that. Um, and then the final stage of that will be, you know, a portal where you can sit in your lounge room, um, no, do your configuration. Um, now, and that's you no. Know, Middle of next year-ish by the time we get that done, but yeah, you'll be sitting, sitting in your lounge room, you know, design what you're to set your parameters, set your master caution parameters, you know, do all that work in, a, in a, using a graphical user interface. You no, know, this parameter, these values, you no, know, it's not not particularly complicated. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously, you know, your user profile is linked to whatever airplanes you own, and you'll download that to your airplane through the app, and, and that that'll reconfigure reconfigure your airplane. Now, um, I do have to. When we go back to the certifications uh, questions for a sure. little bit for, for actual certified sure. airplanes. Um, so my airplane, you know, we talked about it a little bit. Uh, it, it, it's a fairly unique airplane and I've talked to some of the other, you know, I hate to use the word budget, but I've talked to some of the other people that have a little bit more affordable options out there. And even at Oshkosh, like they didn't, they didn't even want to talk to me because they're like, you're not on our TSO. Um, have a nice day. Uh, but then when you look at some of the bigger names, they're like, We've greased the right hands. We can get our TSO on anything. Um, it, are people like me with kind of with kind of unique certified aircraft? Are we going to be kind of left on the wayside, given that you don't have one of ours to kind of prove to the FAA, "Hey, look, it'll fit in it, and it won't burn the plane to the ground"? Or are you able to get it approved without actually testing it in the model? Um, so I think. Uh, it's an interesting question. So obviously, um, no, not everywhere in the world has an AML. Um, yeah, and so now do. Um, Australia, Australia doesn't. Not sure about New Zealand, but no, the AML concept is you no. Know, it was so certainly something that started in the FAA, um, and we've used them you no know, before. We we understand them um, now. Though obviously, the first the first model. The FAA is going to want to see tested. Um, no, second model, they're probably want to going to see tested. Um, no, at what point do they ultimately say right? No, submit this data. Um, and it will go through. Um, no, that that's an experience and a trust relationship that you build up with the with the FAA over time. Um, mm. Now, I think what what reality to talk to your particular situation, it'll be right. No, we'll support you to do it. Um, no, we'll, we'll come. We'll, we'll probably need to install it. We'll probably need to gather some test data and then and then lodge the update to the, to the AML um, to add to add that particular model on it. So no, if it's a if it's a very popular model. That helps everybody. If it's something more unique, then it's going to be you no know, work together. But you know, we we we're very keen to support every customer. Um, no, we we no, we're not a, we're not a huge company. Um, no, we we love we love every one of our customers. We have a great relationship with them all, um, and you know, we'll do what we what it takes to help them get stuff installed and flying. Oh well, um, I mean, if y'all if y'all need a test bed, you know, my airplane's sitting in the hangar ready to go whenever y'all need it. <laughs> Uh, be careful, be careful what you offer. <laughs> you know, um, you, you joke, the airplane was a, it was a test bed for the manufacturer when it lived in Canada. So it's, yep. it's used to it. It's used to it. <laughs> um, Fantastic. Uh, well, that, that is definitely exciting to see that, you know, there's the possibility of getting something approved via Norsi, um, when it comes to an angle of attack sensor without, 
um, you know, needing a TSO without needing a, a, an STC. I mean, not a TSO, a, an STC um, is, 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 is there anything else for us to to kind of look forward to? Is there any other like big news you want to tell us about this new, again, you know, we're talking about the T3000, uh, you know, if you go to, uh, what is it? Microairavionics.com uh, or? Microair, microair.aero. Okay, so microair.aero. Micro, micro air, one word, dot aero. Um, yep, coming, coming, you know, we, we're uh, you know, getting more and more information onto our website, um, which is great. Um, I'd like to, I, so still, still got a bit, still got a bit to get there. Still, you know, we're busily working on all the installation documentation and diagrams. And uh, at the moment, we have any customer we've got that's um, you know, is looking for something, we're just helping them get the data they need whilst we finish pulling that together. Um, but that's no, that's that's growing out. You know, we've got a relatively small engineering team, and you might imagine they're they're very busy. Um, so you know, it, exciting. It, it is exciting times here. Um, you no, know, we've got a huge amount of product. Um, no rolling out. Um, yeah. and that's keeping us, keeping us very, very busy. So, um, oh. yeah, and I guess, I guess anything, you know, obviously, uh, you know, for, for the, for the Americans in your audience, um, you no know, Black Friday is a big thing coming up. So you know, maybe watch the website around Black Friday. <laughs> well, um, that's uh, dang. Now I'm going to have to watch the, uh, uh, website around Black Friday. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, we, we won't be shy in letting people know. Um, now I, I know there was one thing that we were, um, talking about at Oshkosh, uh, interfacing with other GPS. I know currently that it's the dial can really only receive data from, uh, the built-in com. So when I want a CDI, the only CDI I got is like VOR. Um, is there, is there room on that front? Like the NARS 232 where I can hook up to like a Garmin, Avidyne or what, what have you when it comes to a GPS? Yeah, yeah absolutely. So there's probably a little bit of progress in that space. So yes, so um, by by delivery in Q1, we will have a, a small number, I suspect, but at least the core, at least the core ones like Garmin um, covered, maybe Avidyne as well, um, covered in terms of taking serial data. So, we, so we've got... Um, two, two, two RS two thirty twos and one RS four twenty two in the back of every module, um, so we can suck in you know, whatever whatever data is there. Um, but certainly, there's been a lot of demand for having a CDI you know, cause deviation from that. So, yep, there's, a, there's an option in the menu. You, you can switch between um, just taking straight CDI in, or you can use the you know, OBS mode and you no, know, essentially make the GPS waypoint up no a, a VOR. Um, or obviously the, the VOR. So you can do all of that now on the HSI um, and then you'll get a, a magenta line instead of a no, yellow or green one and no, with a deviation that, that reflects what's set on the GPS. So um, I think the other one that's been discussed a lot with customers is the opposite of that. It's actually getting that CDI information out as an autopilot steering. Um, and that is in that is in, in architectural work. It's, no, it's not going to get delivered in the early part of next year, but I would think that, no, tail end of next year we'll, we'll start doing that and that again depends any autopilot that takes the serial output we can do really quickly it's just software we've got those uh, anything that needs either an analog output or a um, our 429 output um then that's no just that needs an extra bit of hardware that we're that we're working on so so we're talking to you know, people about that now too just to make sure that that's coming along okay so it's it's you would really just need a, an, a digital to analog converter um is really what you're saying Okay. Yeah, yeah, um, for, for, for an analog autopilot. And of course, there's a lot of digital autopilots out there, and analog ones are going away. Um, and it may be that we just don't do the analog ones. We go, you know what, it's just let's stick in the digital domain and we can do that now. And if it takes takes you know, standard serial data, we can do it from what we've got. If it needs a 429 steering command, then no, that's not a big deal. We just need to you know, add that on. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm. <laughs> Again, extremely excited about it. I just need it to to, to be certified. Uh, what <laughs> when it comes to um, custom inputs into the into any of these monitors, like the engine monitor? I know again, when you order some of these other stuffs, you can just say, "Well, I want uh, brake pressure." Like, uh, there's another guy out there that I fly around with. He he got one of those other engine monitors, and they gave him like two random ones that he could install and he got break one and break two in his Cessna 152. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, is, uh, you know, is that an option as well? Yeah. Look, 
um, we, and we haven't defined what they would look like. I think keep in mind that the back of the core, without the engine monitor at all, the back of the core has four analog inputs. Okay. Um, so we, so every every time you buy when they, the, the core unit as opposed to the little, the little remotes, you get four analog inputs. So um, no, one of those is going to end up with air ground logic of some kind if if you've got that available. If not, then GPS speed is drives air ground logic. Um, no, one of them might end up with gear logic if you if you want to input it or, or maybe three of them would if you want all three coming through um, um no fuel levels may may go into there or into the engine monitor so so if you've got it if you end up with a you know a, 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 a bigger system I mean what we're seeing customers order is you no know, two cores both with batteries um so they've got a back battery backed ah and a battery backed hsi or adi and um uh, hsi depending on your language. Um, then you've got eight inputs there as a start. Put an engine monitor on, you've got all the engine ones plus all the cold side ones, which you can configure for what you want. Um, so you end up with you know, more analog inputs than most aeroplanes have got systems for. So yeah, now, do I have a display today that shows brake pressure? No. Could we build it? Yes. Would it take very long? No. Probably a week. Okay. Um, no. That depends how busy. I'm not, I'm not committing to getting it done in a week. Probably a week's <laughs> worth of effort. Maybe we've got, we got a lot on. But yeah, yeah I mean, that, those those kind of things are you know, infinitely doable. Again, that's the advantage of having you know, all the data on a single data bus and a flexible instrument system is you can you know, just add what you want. And when you're saying add what you want, you're saying this is a software thing. Like this is a, this is a later patch. Like if I was to order this system today, uh, a year down the line, this system could be three times as good because we've implemented more uh, or you've implemented more option. You've implemented more features. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the core hardware is the core hardware and even the radios and transponders largely software defined now. No, we take an RF signal, we convert, we, we down convert it, we, we, we digitize it and then we do all the processing in the digital domain and we produce audio and no like, radio um, out, um, instrument outputs out of the back of it. Um, so, yes, I mean, you continuously update it. Um, and, and you update from the app. So walk on the aeroplane, open the app, go to the firmware update button. It recognises all of the, you know, what, what in most aeroplanes are going to be dozens of different processors sitting in all those different, every, that's the other thing. It's got all this distributed processing, um, recognises all of that, understands what status they're at, and then they push, pushes updates where where's required. So, yeah, no, we, we will be dropping... I mean, we see it absolutely as a core part of our value contribution for those that have bought systems is that they continue to get no improvements, if we can call it that, but no added features um, over time. So, yeah, that's that's absolutely core part of the architecture. Okay. Now, um, what about security? I know uh, that that was kind of one of my concerns is it, if it is so easy to update, you know, you hear those horror stories of of people with, you know, effectively some wires and coat hangers hooked up to the USB of their laptop and they're able to hack into your Kia and drive away in it. Um, what's preventing someone from just walking around the airport with a laptop and messing with all your parameters? Um, so uh, quite a lot of security. Okay. Um, um, so, <laughs> I know you can't tell me exactly what it is, but there no, is security. But, but, um, at, at the end of the day, you, you need to be able to link the two devices together. So at, at, a, at a really fundamental level, it connects by Bluetooth. Now, you need to be in the airplane to go connect to that. No, that connect to that. And you need to do it on both devices at the same time. So, you know, oh, and obviously it needs to be powered. Most people don't leave their airplanes powered when they're you know, walking around the airport. So, so the, I mean, the risk the risk is, is low. Um, no, unlike say a you no know, a commercial aeroplane where you've got lots of you no know, bored passengers sitting in the back that might want to try and hack into it. Um, in reality, in reality, most of our customers you know it's families owning aeroplanes or you no know, few and I owning aeroplanes and wanting to fly them. So you no, know, we we do we have left intentionally left a few things exposed. Um, no, not not so people can hack into it, but so that they can you no know, we can expand and we can you know, do that. So you no. Know, um, uh, no, a, a good example of that that we're working on right now is you know, for flying schools, um, the ability to you know, capture an entire student's pl flight profile um, and have that available to review with with the student when they when they land and walk back to the the flying school is really powerful. Uh, and again, all the data's on the data bus. We've got all that. We can capture that, and we can and we can help flying schools with that you know, that sort of that data model. Um, you now, what does that look like? Still working on the concepts, um, but no, that, that that's probably an example of where you know having having access to that data being able to, and being able to use it, it can really add value in the in the you know, in the market that we play in. Okay, but I mean, at the end of the day, it's it's about as secure as like the infotainment system in your car, where you need physical 
connection to like, I need to be able to yes. tap that screen and then tap the the screen on whether my phone, the iPad or, you know, my laptop before any data will transfer. I need to have physical yeah. access to it with power to the device. Okay. Um, yeah. That yeah. And, and, and I'd argue it's probably a little more secure than that, but yes. Yeah. No, um, and, there's, and there's a few other levels of security. No, I mean, a good example would be, you know, you get on the airplane, you expect, you know, you know everyone's going to connect via Bluetooth to their audio. They're all going to be listening to stuff. No, a bunch of them people are going to be interested in the instrument display, so they're going to want that on their device. So they're going to connect as well. Um, but there is a pilot pin, no, so that's no, okay. only only the pilot. No, in a family environment, no, we've all no, some of us have got teenage sons; they like to fiddle. I, should, I shouldn't exclude teenage daughters in that, should I? Um, <laughs> maybe that's being a bit sexist, but um, no. No, we have we have children who like to fiddle, um, but yeah, pin code pilot sets it to whatever they want, um, and that and that it's just a really simple way of saying, hey, these are the things I can control. You can see it all, kids. That's great, but you're not going to go and change my radio frequencies or no any other setting on the aeroplane. Um, no, and perhaps cause a safety incident. So yeah, there's some so some simple other other steps at the next level as well, where you, you clearly want people, you know, want the kids to have connected because you want their no, they want to listen to their music and do whatever else and follow the flight. Um, but you don't want them making changes to stuff. So yeah, that, 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 that's all built in. Okay. Um, now one of uh, this, this might be a personal thing for me, but I know there's a bunch of people out there flying airplanes, um, taking videos, trying to share it with friends. And one of the hardest things to do is get audio into a camera. Like I've got, you know, like this GoPro trying to get this GoPro to record camera or try to record airplane audio is yeah, right. it's like trying to pull teeth out of an alligator. Um, I know s some companies advertise that you can Bluetooth your GoPro to um, our audio panel and then it works 8% of the time. Um, <laughs> is, is there, is, is that already accomplished that I can, you know, connect my cameras in with the audio so that I can record things and share it with people? Or is that something in the future? Or am I still looking at like a dongle cable, you know, running stuff all over the airplane, trying to get oh. audio into this GoPro? I'll be I'll be completely honest. I've never thought of it. So we will we will take that we will take that as feedback, and we'll go away and think about how we how we help solve solve that problem. So so oh, that's, well, that, I, that's that's really interesting. That's great. Well, we will we will go and add that to the list of list of requirements, and work out how we deliver it. Can't promise it'll be in the first delivery next year. Got a lot to do before that. But that's no great feedback. We'll uh, we'll we'll think about how we solve that problem. I mean, it it's it's been something that's been you know a struggle for me for a, for a while, mm. but it might very well just be because I have, you know, the original audio paddle from 1984 in my airplane. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting and saving up for y'all stuff. So I don't yeah. have to do two installs. <laughs> um, Fantastic. Now, now you keep referencing this, this kind of list um, of things that you got to get done before uh, Q1 or before the release uh, next year. Uh, can you go over some of those things or is it kind of like back of the house? Like, Hey, we can't really talk about no, it, but no, no, we're excited. No, absolutely. No, no, absolutely. I mean, obviously we're, no, we're, we're very mature in our product life cycle in terms of development. Um, but we know we've got a whole lot of formal tests. We don't want to release anything to the market until we've tested it in much the same way as we would if we were applying for TSA. It's obviously not FAA witness, but we know we're testing it to the same documentation. Um, and you can imagine that across a product that's got, I think it's 14 TSOs across the product. No, the pile of pile of paper that makes up the requirements is no, no feet high. Um, so, you know, the process is we obviously distill all of that down into, into a full set of requirements, which which runs to the thousands. Um, they get broken down into smaller requirements and smaller requirements, and ultimately you climb back up the curve with all the tests and you end up having having set of test plans. Um, and then ultimately when I when I sign off the DDP, the Declaration of Design Performance, you know, I need comfort that we've got 100% test coverage over every, everything that's that, that's a core requirement. Um, so we're, we're in that, and that's a, you know, a, both a documentation and a, and a physical process because you're, you know, you're processing huge amounts of data um, in doing it. So, so that's where we're at. We're running um, accelerated life tests at the moment too. We've got some units being, you know, being being vibrated like you wouldn't believe to see whether we can uh, we can break them, um, just to make sure that we've you know we've covered those reliability issues. Um, no, so there's no, there's a there's a huge amount. Um, no, going on there. Um, no, obviously the no the AHAs and those no systems. Um, you now we've got ro robots and ro motorized control units that are busily throwing the A-house around, and uh, we're going to put some videos out actually um, <laughs> on our website in the next you know, over the next few weeks of some of the testing that is going on because some of it's actually pretty cool uh, for, the, you know, for the for the engineers of us. 
Um, no, it's, there's some pretty neat stuff that's going on in the test environment. So, so we're working through that at the same time as we're ramping up um, no, no production capability to make sure we've got the, the hardware flowing through. Um, no, and no, do we find the occasional software bug still? Yep, that's part of the rather part of the reason we do it. So we can uh, no, we can be burning those out, um, making sure that we're delivering a no, an exceptional product when we when it hits the market in or hits, no, starts delivering um, in Q1. Well, I mean, that's exciting. It sounds like you're doing a whole lot more uh, testing than some of the other things we might have seen coming out recently. Uh, not necessarily in aviation, but, just, you know, in general, I, you know, I'm a gamer and I think back to when like Arkham Knight first released and the game barely functioned. Um, yeah, so right. it definitely seems like uh, you're doing the testing that's required to ensure that, you know, somebody's not going to be up in like an RV 12 going, well, I guess I don't have any instruments today. I guess we're going to go try and land. Uh, that, so that's, that, would, that would be bad. <laughs> yeah, that would that's definitely not, be not our intention. Clearly. Uh, clearly, clearly with how, with how much testing oh, yeah. is going into this. Um, is there anything um, else you want to, you want to add, you want to make sure people are aware of uh, before we finish this up? Cause again, you know, I'm excited for it. I am just one of those suckers that bought a certified airplane. So I have to wait even longer. <laughs> well, we can try and get you into an experimental airplane and, uh, no, and you can get early access, but no, look, that's, uh, I, I think we've covered it and I appreciate your time. Um, no, great, great to catch up. Um, but uh, no, well, what we've got on is keeping us plenty busy enough. But we will take on the uh, the GoPro audio, and we'll see how, we'll see we'll see what we can do to sort solve that one for you. Awesome, awesome. Well, I, I appreciate you talking to me, um, uh, and you know, be on the lookout in the comments for any kind of other updates people might be looking yep. for. Uh, you pretty much answered all of the uh, the comments that were there. You know, the reliability concerns um, and uh, angle of attack sensors was another one. Um, so yeah, again, I appreciate it. And, um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day then. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll just, I'll just say though, the last time you challenged us to a fish finder and I still, ha I still haven't, oh, no, we need the face for your, um, your depth sounder. I still haven't solved that one for you yet either, but I'm sure we can. <laughs> awesome. Have, we, we, awesome. We haven't forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I definitely need it. I've looked for one and I just, there's no Norsi approved depth, depth finders. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I'm sure we can work out how to do it. All right. Great to talk to you. Appreciate your time. Yep. Appreciate it. Take care now.